reallocation of the PML that's mm -hmm. causing uh, WISIC to have a bump in its a a ACL. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was just asking if we're starting to do risk inland Texas, if that made any difference and effectively quickly bring us back to 400, but if it's PML, that's, it's PML. That, that, no, that's it's much. PML. Okay. And it's also a reserve, reserving charge and a reinsurance re recoverable charge right. because of Ida and Nicholas at quarter three, which will obviously go down as that's paid. That is, thank that's you. We're going to have an update on the merger, but it's also going to be merged. The extent to which the companies are eventually merged, then, uh, then some of that goes, the allocation of PML between the two kind of disappears. So that's really the next slide shows the RBC at a combined basis. Right. Right. And there you go. The, you know, right. And the $20 million surplus in the combined company, we're at 353. And that $400 minimum RBC goes away at the point that they're merged. 400%. 400%. Sorry. sorry. Boy, this is a big, a big exclamation point around the benefit from a capital point of view of combining the companies. Certainly on an RBC basis, yes. Great, thank you. Those are excellent exhibits, Rachel. Thank you. All right, so next on the agenda, um, now we're going to move into the actual. Uh, do you want to give an update on the storms, Dan? Sure, we want to do that. Yeah, the, the next slide is uh, an update on on Ida, um, or I should say on the storms. Um, I mean, as, as Michael Millett already spoke to, um, you know, there definitely is extensive damage in Louisiana. And um, I think what we're finding is, you know, 100 mile an hour winds well inland. And, you know, for our claims team, we're seeing a lot of trees, large trees falling on homes. Um, I'm sure Ben can speak to uh, you know, your experience as well, but um, it's apparently a heavily treated area, so that is a pretty common loss and a large loss. But um, you know, Missy, Trudy, uh, Rachel, and, I, and Eddie, and I all sat around. Um, actually, I'm sorry, and Raphael with the modeling and um, went through various looks at it, and we came up with our initial ultimate estimate of um, a range of 48 million to 63 million with a midpoint of 55 million. So that's what we were working with our midpoint of 55. Um, Can I, did you, a, are you seeing increased severity? And if so, how is that, imp how is that reflected in your estimate? Um, what, well, you want to text the severity because you did an estimate on that. This, this is, yeah, no, I'm so, talking, sorry. I'm talking specifically for Ida. Right. Right now, the severity on the initial reserves is sitting under 25,000. A lot of those are just initial um, set. Um, but we do, we do anticipate a higher severity. We, so we took past events. We increased them by the 25% that we're sort of seeing in the ballpark, seeing in the construction increases. Um, and then also a lot of these are, are very large, they're larger losses. So we're expecting a higher severity in Ida, but very few have materialized to where they've had a claims adjuster actually inspect them on the ground um, and set those bespoke yet. I mean, we're getting there. I think this last week or so that we yeah. had a lot more of the initial, at the time we came up with the initial estimate, there's very little um, but it, it's definitely, a, a, it's going to be a much larger average loss, certainly than a Nicholas, mm -hmm. um, which is more claims, but smaller, so, you know, low, much lower severity. Um, our net retention for Ida is $2 million. Um, the billing's already been sent out to the reinsurers for the initial cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's with the ICAR, actually, yeah. the guy carpet and the reinsurers. Yeah. Right? yeah, we requested $25 million. So um, can I just ask, when I look at this chart, estimated gross loss, that's to you. Correct. So this is showing that your min max was 747 from air, 962 from RMS. Your averages were 25, Karen Clark 32. 
and you're using 55. How do I string those? Because it looks like you've got three averages from the three models that range from 25 to 32 and you're using 55. And, I, and I'm sure that the reason is good. And in fact, I already divided 55 by 0 0.003, which is your market share. And it comes out to 18 billion, which is more or less in line with where the modeling firms estimate Louisiana had a loss. So that's refreshing. But how did you get to 55? Yeah, yeah go ahead, Missy. We, we did a lot of different looks, to be yeah. honest. So. so we started off at like day 10 on a frequency severity basis. So as I said, we started with past hurricanes at 23 to 25, and we, we increased that as high as 35. Um, we got to a, a claim count um, around between 1,600 and 2,200, where we were pretty comfortable with the 1,800. Um, we mapped our exposures in the track of um, Ida, and we had just over 2,000. So we, we were pretty comfortable that we're going to have between 1,800 and 2,000. In past storms, we've seen a 20 to 25% close with no pay. So we, we know even if there's a claim, they're not all going to have a payment. So we were pretty comfortable with that 18 to 2,000 range. <clears throat> um, and so we have a range on a frequency severity basis um, of 48 to 70 in a very extreme situation. Um, and then, as you said, we took the modeler's um, total estimates um, and applied the 0.3% market share and got to between 50 and 80 ish, but the 80 includes um, offshore. It includes some big, some perils and coverages we don't have. So we went to the low side of that range. Actually, the models running through our exposure is the, is the lowest estimate we have. So we put less weight into that. Also knowing that we would need to load those models for loss adjustment expenses. So we looked at all those estimates and we we kind of kept falling out in that you know high 40s to 60 range um and so that's where we got to all right that sounds very respectable i'm just struck by the fact that we're using a loss estimate that's approximately the double the average of the three modeling firms uh, it's in the it's one of it's it's mm -hmm. kind of similar to their max events really yeah, um, yeah, it is. Except so the mid events, we we kind of looked at like, okay, given that yeah, you know, these these low ones just didn't make sense, but the top, you know, the higher ones all all really were more in line. Based, based on the the flow of claims that you're seeing, are you comfortable with this estimate? I still think. Where are we? Yeah, yeah. the the eighteen hundred claims is still holding. You know, as I said, the severity is going to be a little bit slower to come through, but we're under 25 currently. So going as high as 30 or 35, I think, leaves us comfortable. Um, as of so the 1800 holding, how many how many new claims are you getting in a day at this point? I, I don't have the daily number. As of now, we have just under 1600. And using past large events, we were 90% reported by day 23 that we're at now. Well, I would toss another item in the pot for you, which is that unlike Katrina, I, I, I've, I've watched this day to day. At this moment, I believe that essentially all the power in Louisiana is on. Um, and and it was all on in New Orleans and Baton Rouge a couple of weeks ago. So this is nothing like that. You know, and, and to me, a situation where you have power on and roads are open, you you will get your claims in faster. Sorry, the 90% is based on our claims. Yeah. Not Katrina, not an industry Katrina percentage. Got it. No, I'm just saying that this couldn't be more different. I was in Katrina in December of 2005, um, three months after the storm. And at that point, large sections of the city were without power. Large sections of the city were still abandoned. Um, 
and this, the city still looked like a ruin. 